Y'all are gonna sit in the front row and eat water burger. I'm gonna come steal a fry. <laughs> It's going here. It's going. I didn't okay. set up the no, other. No, no, that's fine. Okay. So get, get the online going. Is is me having it right here? Yes. Okay. Um, it was. You can actually even walk around when you're holding okay. that, and it'll still I'll, reach. I'll probably just stay. I'm not going to get on the power. Well, you can't see you unless you're by that orange mark. 
That's why I drew on the floor. Ladies and gentlemen, I really appreciate you being here. We've got a lot of information for you tonight. Um, we have a great turnout, so we are hoping that everybody can hear. Um, once we are finished, she's going to talk to you about what you can do afterwards, and I would like to introduce you to one of our greatest teachers, Miss Estee. Hi. Um, so is this in present mode? It is. Okay. Your life. Hello, huh? everyone. I am Casey Estee. I teach the advanced biologies up here, both freshmen and then uh, juniors and seniors. So um, we are... We, we decided to have this meeting to, obviously, to give you information because um, I see a lot of eighth grade parents um, coming up to high school. It's a, it's a different world. It's a completely different world. So we want to be as open with you so that you know what's coming, to give you all the options, to give you all the information, to allow you to ask questions for us. Um, and if there's any that are already at the high school, um, which I do see some current students that you know about the upcoming deadlines with AP testing and um, all of those things. So these are just the things, uh, the reasons for the why we're here tonight. Now, um, I don't know if you can see this quote, so I'm going to read it. Um, it says, success is not measured by what you accomplish, but by the opposition you have encountered and the courage with, the courage with you have maintain the struggle against the odds. Um, as a parent, and I can speak to you as both a teacher and a parent, because I had both my kids go through high school, um, being in advanced classes is not always fun, and it's not always easy, and there's a lot of struggle. Um, the best thing I can tell you as a parent is to help your child to embrace the struggle that they may encounter because there will be times where it's not going to be easy. It's going to be very different than what they may be used to at junior high. Um, and that's hard as a parent to, to, to sometimes do, but it's only going to make them stronger on the other end. So tonight, some of the things that we're planning on um, giving you some information about we're going to go through our dual credit options, which that's going to be pertainable to the current students. Um, we're going to talk with Ms. Jordan Scott here in just a minute um, from Blinn. We're going to also just give you some general information about the advanced um, academics and honors courses. Currently, um, the, the, we have advanced classes, not to be confused with advanced placement classes. So. Advanced, for example, I teach freshman advanced biology, which is formerly pre-AP biology, and probably next year will be called honors biology. So the terminology is a little, can be confusing. Um, and that's not to be confused with, with advanced placement, which is AP. You are in junior high, you're probably taking AAP classes. That's what they call them at junior high which is totally different than AP. So there's a lot of, I can understand why there's a lot of confusion. So we'll have Erica, uh, Ms. Ross talk about that. Um, and then we actually have Ms. Campbell and Ms. Marcus, who's going to give us the lowdown on the AP College Board classes, deadlines for testing, some statistics and things like that. And then we'll finish up with talking to our head counselor, Ms. Julie Haverkamp, and then closing with our current uh, principal, Ms. Brandy Hendricks, okay? So, with that being said, I'm going to turn it over to um, Mrs. Jordan Scott, who is our Blinn dual credit person, and she's going to give you some information about dual credit. That is not a microphone, that's just for the oh, I, so. Okay, well, I, I will try to speak loudly. My name is Jordan Scott. Um, like she said, I am the coordinator for dual credit. Um, I'm going to give you some information and some... Um, options about your dual credit at Brenham High School. So the first thing that you need to know is what dual credit is. Dual credit is a college level course that you take in high school and you receive both college and high school credit for. Um, so this means that once you graduate high school, you will be able to um, order your Blaine College transcript and take these courses with you throughout um, to your next college or university. And these are also 
Um, these courses will also be accepted as your high school credit. Can you please speak up? Yes, I will, I will speak up. The, the microphone that she's holding is actually for the online. So everything will be available. We're recording everything, so she's not I, I have a, a very soft voice, but I will try and speak up. Is this a little bit better? A little bit. Um, so some of the benefits to taking dual credit is you are earning that college, the college transfer credit and also the college experience while you're still in high school. Um, so these, you're, you're, all the classes that are offered at Brenham High School are face-to-face -face with a blend instructor, with, um, with your high school classmates. Um, so you're definitely in an environment that you're familiar with. These are the courses for Brenham, um, that Brenham High School offers for dual credit, History 1301 and History 1302. Those would be taken throughout the semester, one long semester. Um, so History 1301 would be fall, and then History 1302 would be spring. And then that's the same for English, and then government and econ are gonna be paired. And Biology 1308 and 1108 are recently added to Brenham High School's um, courses and that's actually taught by a high school teacher that's credentialed by Blinn. Um, so you don't have to pay tuition on that. It's just the fees, which is about $58. And these are the registration steps. The first step would be to attend a parent meeting. It's going to be a different parent meeting than this one. It would actually be for incoming juniors and incoming seniors. Um, after you do that, you'll apply through Apply Texas. It's a quick, easy, free application. Um, and then we'll need test scores. That can be TSIA, ACT, or SAT. Um, and then we'll also need the dual credit approval form. And this is going to be um, the student's approval, the parent's approval, and then the high school's approval that you are eligible to take dual credit classes. Can you say that again? What the approval process? The approval pro so for the approval process, we'll need the student signature, the parent signature, and then the high school signature. And once we have that, Blaine College will um, register the student for the class. And we actually register and drop all students through our office. It's a little bit different than a traditional student would. Um, so if you have to drop for some reason or if you want to add a course, you would just go to your, your counselor and she would let us know. And then these are the dual credit contacts. I have all of these also at my booth over there. Um, so if you have any additional questions or want some information, um, please come and see me. YouTube Live, it's on all our social media, but they can find it on our website. Okay, so we are videoing all of this so that if you missed anything or if you want access to the presentation, um, it's on all of our social media outlets, uh, YouTube Live, Twitter, so if you need to go back and see anything, um, you can't, I don't need the mic because I didn't go um, And she will be available for questions also after the presentation, so if you have something specific you need to talk to her about. Um, okay, so next we're going to move on and we're going to talk about the advanced, just kind of a general about the advanced <laughs> academics that things um, that we offer. And we're actually, we have Miss Erica Ross, who is, she teaches the freshman biology with me, but she's also the dual credit biology teacher that Miss um, Stott was talking about. So, howdy! Howdy! Yay, I have some Aggies out there and you guys saw some. Okay, let me get in the right place for video recording. Okay, all right, I didn't want it. Can you hear now? No. Okay, well, I'm, I'm going to holler until the microphone is working. Okay, um, so I'm going to speak to honors courses, and these are going to be, currently what we have is pre-AP. Next year, they're going to be called honors courses. And each subject is a little bit different. So if you have subject specific questions, that's why we have the table set up. But in general, we do have some commonalities across the board for our honors classes. And that would be um, our expectations that we have and our rigor that we have in our classroom. So first our goals for the honors classes is to prepare them for the advanced placement classes and also for college level classes. I teach both, uh, like Casey said, I teach dual credit biology I teach regular biology and I have honors biology. So I see a little bit of every spectrum. So as far as honors goes, it's at the same pace. 
However, the amount of rigor that we teach it at and the amount of depth that we go into the subjects is higher. And it's able to give some more real life situations and to bring in some extracurricular activities such as our independent research project and our novels that we do in biology. And I'm sure your other <coughs> Okay, I'm just gonna holler. Can everybody hear me? Okay, all right, great. Um, so our goal is to prepare them so when they do go into the advanced placement courses and into the dual credit courses and into college where you're really putting your money where your mouth is with your courses, they are prepared for that and they don't just sink. So as a freshman, I can speak to that right now because I have freshmen coming in from eighth grade is a big change. And right now, the amount of zeros that come in, it's scary. And But that's because they aren't expect, they, they come in with an expectation that, oh, maybe we'll let it slide. But in our honors courses, we really do have a policy that we don't accept late work. So that goes into also our expectations that we have in our honors courses, and that's that our students hold themselves accountable. And speaking to accountability, the students have a planner, just like they had when the freshmen come in, they get planners, just like they had in junior high. They really need to keep that schedule because, and keep that assignment due dates, because our students, you have wonderful, wonderful kids, and we know wonderful, wonderful kids are involved in everything, okay? So that's gonna come, you might have a football game or a band concert or whatever it may be extracurricular on the night before a test. Students need to know how to prepare for that and start preparing three or four days in advance versus the night before. So those organizational skills that are going to be necessary in college and advanced placement courses, we want to instill that in our honors courses. So, um, so all of you may have different reasons for why you want your child to be in an honors course. One of the great benefits is that it is graded on a 5.0 scale versus a 4.0 scale. And the counselors can speak to that a little bit more, but it's, it's comparable if they come home and say they made a 82 on a test, if they took that same test in a regular class, it would be like a 92. So that's kind of the way I like to explain it. But when you're calculating your GPA, you can graduate with higher than a 4.0 if you take honors courses. So if you do want your student to be in that top 10%, it is very important to take those honors courses because your kids graduating in that top 10% are gonna have above a 4.0. So it is stressed to have to take those honors courses, but they also need to be prepared because there are also other reasons for students to take those. So yes, you want that extra credit, that bump in your GPA, but the other benefits are that it helps them to prepare for college, like I've already spoke about, Self-accountability, students really need to be self-accountable and have those organization skills that they need because there may not be somebody holding their hand all the time. We hold their hand a little bit. We don't want them to completely sink, but we're trying to hold them accountable and be responsible for their own work. So um, also the, the deeper level of curriculum understanding, like I said, that they have opportunities to do extracurricular work with our projects that we offer in honors classes and then uh, time management like I said that's very important with our honor student because they are involved in everything one of the biggest problems we see is that um, they're absent for an extracurricular activity well they are responsible for getting that work in before they're absent and that's a big thing with freshmen that we really try to teach I don't want to scare anybody off from it but if you're involved in five, six different things and then you take all honors courses, it may be a tough freshman year. And that's okay, we're gonna help them through it, but just be prepared for that extra work that may be coming. So, all righty, we're gonna pass it along and we will be at the tables to answer any questions for each subject. Okay, so now we're going to hear from um, Ms. Cindy Marcus, who is our wonderful AP Calculus, AP Stats, um, Pre-Cal, I mean, she does it all. And then Ms. Tracy Campbell, who is our testing coordinator, and they're gonna talk specifically about some AP stuff. Um, Okay, if you're 
two questions I always get. Should my kid take an advanced class? Should my kid take the AP test? Here's why your kid should take an advanced class, because it prepares them for college. Regardless of the grade your kid makes in there, it prepares your son or daughter for college. And if that's your goal, this is supposed to go in your pocket so I can move around, thank God. Okay. <laughs> So that's one thing. Number two, because you know what? You can be, I'll phrase this, I'm going to be humorous here. At Brenham High School, you can be unsuccessful for free. When your kid goes to college, you're paying for it. And it's very expensive, very expensive. So, and one out, you know, a three hour course is like $500. And your kid's going to take like 15 hours in college. So it's very expensive. So you want them to be prepared. Number two, should my kid take the test? Can you go to the next one for me? Research shows even if your kid takes the test, $96, and makes a one or a two, your son or daughter will be more successful in college just from taking that test because it's so rigorous. So, my advice to you, anyone who knows my children, they're adults, old adults now, but anyone who knows my children can tell you that the expectation in our house was gigantic. And my children were extremely, my children were extremely successful in school because we instilled in them a work ethic because they were in advanced classes. It's all about doing the work. It's all about doing the work. So yes, your kids should be in advanced classes if he or she is willing to work and you're willing to support them. Does that mean jumping them when they make a poor grade? Not necessarily. I can tell you exactly what I said to my kids. Did you go talk to the teacher? Did you go ask the teacher why you missed this particular question. And it sends them, that's a skill they need in college. You can't even go talk to the blend professors when your kids are junior or senior in high school. If your kids fail in blend when they're a junior, they can't talk to you. They cannot. So you need to teach your kid that skill. That skill. So yes, they should take advanced classes. Yes, they should take the AP test because that's going to help them down the road when they're in college. So if your son or daughter is currently in an AP test all around, we have a QR code where they can register for the test. Uh, there's also, you can go online. I also have Chromebooks back here, back here if you want to register tonight. If you have any questions about advanced academics, you're welcome to contact me here at the school. You can email me. I answer emails all the time. I help kids with college stuff all the time. I'll be here tonight. I um, have a lot of former students in here who are now parents. So I'm here to help your kid be successful in advanced classes. So please ask me questions or whatever. But it's very relevant that they do take the AP test and they do take advanced classes. What's the deadline for the AP test? The deadline for registering for the AP test is November 2nd, which is next week, Tuesday. The reason it's so early is because the college board makes us buy it that early. I guess they invest our money until May. I don't know. But anyway, that's a joke. You know anything about the college board. Uh, Ms. Marcos is now going to speak to you about the AP stuff. Okay, so um, at Burnham High School, we are very, very proud that we over, uh, offer over 20 AP courses, um, and so our students have a lot of opportunity to earn college credit. Um, if they take the AP exam at the end of the course and pass it, then they can get college credit that um, will transfer um, to any college, because college, uh, the AP test is a national test, and so um, it would be recognized in any state um, in the United States, not just in Texas. Um, and so it's a really wonderful, wonderful opportunity for our students to gain a lot of college credit 
Some of our students have even gone on to college and, and has started, should be a freshman, but they actually start as sophomores because they have earned so much credit while they were in high school. So it saves you guys a whole, whole lot of money if they can do that. Um, some of the benefits they've already talked about, but I'm going to reiterate. Um, as an AP teacher, it's amazing to watch my students from the beginning of the year to the end of the year grow. They grow as learners. Um, because the way that AP classes are, are run, they just have to think at a much deeper, more intense level. They learn problem solving, skills that will just take them very, very, very far. Um, they're going to be ready for those kind of collaborative classes when they get to college. Um, it is definitely a process and one that I think is very, very beneficial. Um, uh, another benefit that maybe we don't always think about is um, AP classes look really good on college um, applications. So when your students are applying for college and um, when the admissions counselors see that your child has taken AP classes, even we've heard from counselors, even if they don't always pass the AP test, the fact that they took the course and stayed in it, it looks really good on their college application. So that's, that's something to also consider. Um, other things, um, because AP is a national program, it is governed by the college board. So when um, we AP teachers teach the course, we have very strict standards um, that we have to cover. And so it's not just what Texas says that we have to teach, it's what the governing body of college board for the entire United States says. And so one thing to keep that in mind is that it affects the speed and pace of our courses. We are required to get through a certain amount of coursework for uh, that year. And so sometimes AP courses move rather quickly, even compared to just regular honors courses. Um, and sometimes students have a, t a hard time adjusting to that. They all do eventually, but in the beginning, sometimes it's difficult. Um, and then even some courses like biology and chemistry are actually two semester courses, so those even move faster. So the pace and the rigor is sometimes um, uh, an adjustment, but our kids do adjust. And, and so we uh, don't want that to scare you off, but we also want our students to be prepared for that. Um, for most of the AP courses, there are prerequisites. And so I would encourage you when you're done to walk by the tables and talk to the teachers of the different departments and ask, if my child wants to get to AP Calculus, what do they need to do to get there? Um, and all of the teachers would be happy to help you with that. Um, we do uh, expect when a, a student takes an AP class that they dedicate time outside of class to study. And um, there are usually homework assignments and things um, that the student has to do. Uh, the college board says that you should plan to spend an hour to two hours times the amount of uh, class time that you have in class um, because our students need time to synthesize and, um, and apply what they're learning. You know, how many times do you come home and your student says, man, in class I understood everything and then I got home and nothing made sense. It's very true. They have to have the time to sit and, and work on it on their own. And, and, and I tell my students that homework is just as much for me to find out what you don't know as it is for what you do know. So homework has a lot of value. Um, and if students uh, approach it that way, then it can really be game-changing game for them. Um, it's important that we know what they know and what they don't know prior to their test. Um, most AP classes, not all, it's up to the teacher, but most of us have summer assignments. So if your child signs up for an AP course, it's important that they check with that teacher and see if there's some summer coursework that, that um, is required. Um, I know for my courses, I give them summer assignments because from pre-cal to calculus, we hit the ground running. And so we spend one day of review and then we're on to learning new material. So the summer coursework is to help them stay current on their math skills so that when we start, they are ready to go. And, and many of the other courses have summer work as well. Um, most of us who teach a AP classes also use old AP test questions when we create tests. And so the rigor of our tests is high to match the rigor that they're going to experience when they take an AP test. 
We do not want them to have easy tests all year long and then they take the AP test and it's, wow, what's this? So most of us use old AP test questions on our tests to, to, to prepare them for that level. Uh, another thing, AP tests are timed. And so that is something that we uh, try to get our students accustomed to throughout the year. And that is very, very hard um, because they have to finish our tests in the time period of class. They cannot have extra time because their AP test is timed. And if we do not um, get them ready for that, then when it comes time for the actual AP exam, then sometimes they run out of time and, and that would not be good. Um, there are resources. We encourage our students, if they are struggling, to please come and see us and see us soon and not wait. Um, almost every one of us offers tutorials and we would love to help your student. And, and so we encourage them to come and get help. There's also a wonderful resource by the College Board called AP Classroom. And on that, they can go for any AP subject and they can uh, find videos and resources for every single topic that is taught um, by their uh, teacher. Um, and then lastly, I just wanted to say, how can parents help? And Mrs. Eshtay alluded to this er earlier. The best thing you guys can do for your students is to teach your, your child that struggle isn't bad. Struggle is a part of advanced courses and it is a good thing. It is a good thing to struggle and make it through to the other side. It teaches them perseverance and it teaches them skills that they will need for a long, long time. It will get them through college. So encourage them when they're struggling. Praise them, support them, um, and talk to us. We would be happy it, because sometimes it is an adjustment and, and we're more than happy to, to support you as you support your child. our head counselor and she's going to give us all the kind of the counseling end of things. Yeah. Well, so, um, so they summed up very good as far as AP advanced, the rigor. Uh, from the counseling side, a lot of the parents have questions on if you know that your child is ready to sign up for classes, when is that going to be? If you have questions about, I'm not sure, um, I want some more detail, that's also what we're here for. So to kind of give you um, a little bit of heads up, all of our counseling staff here at the high school is meeting with um, every student. We are starting with juniors, so our current junior class in November. Um, and we have opened that up for parents to come into those meetings. It's a one-on-one -on -one meeting with your student to look at what are some questions they have, what classes should they enroll for, get them signed up for the proper classes for the following year. So I know that um, I heard earlier that we have a lot of incoming freshmen. We will also be meeting with them as well. So. Uh, for the current 8th graders, our projected time is mid-February. So if you have an email on file, it will come to your email with a link to sign up for that. So kind of a timeline, because I know not everybody in here is current 8th graders. So we're starting with our juniors in November, and then moving to our current freshmen, and then going to our 10th graders, and then that February time will be our current 8th graders. So if you have questions in between, obviously, like they said tonight, please feel free to ask away. But from the counseling staff, that's the biggest thing that we get. And we will dedicate time for each, of, each student. And the parents are welcome and uh, greatly appreciated if you attend those meetings as well to help us get on the same page with that. Um, another question that we always get a lot is, the struggles that start coming at the beginning of the year. My kids signed up for all AP classes. And now they're not making it. What do we do? So the biggest thing is to remember is that we monitor. We're not going to let them fall out and not be successful at all. So at the first six weeks, they have an opportunity to get out. Okay? So we're, we're going to pull that student in. We're going to talk to them. We're going to conference with you. We're going to make sure that this is the right decision for your student instead of it just being a temporary struggle that they need to overcome and achieve, right? So we will have those conversations as we come. We ask that once that first six weeks end, that they stay in until that semester. So if at semester they need to change and we need to look at that, we'll have that same conversation we would have had at the first six weeks mark. So I don't want you to leave here thinking today like, ooh, I'm not really sure. Please feel free to ask questions. That's what we're all here for. We want to make sure they're placed correctly. Okay? And then, so 
just remember, any questions that you have about anybody that spoke, they're, they're, we're all going to be in the back. Um, and we're going to finish up with Mrs. Brandy Hendricks, who is our current principal. And she's going to give you some closing remarks. Hey, so I just want to say when I walked, I, we were missing a kid earlier, and so I was frantically talking to the police officers. We found the kid, so everything is great. So when I came back in here and saw how many people were here, I was just amazed. So this is awesome that we have this many uh, parents that are interested in their kids' advanced academics. As a parent of two kids that are in college right now at Texas A&M, <laughs> Um, all the credits that you can get in, in high school, please do that because it is so expensive. So paying $94 for an AP test now will save you like $2,500 per <laughs> class in college. So um, I encourage you to do that. And like I said, we, we have a plan this year to meet with every student, meet with as many parents as we can to get the master schedule um, where it will be built around student interest and student needs. And so um, I'm super excited about the counseling department and all of our AP teachers and what we have to offer. We're also doing a lot with Glenn. We're trying to open that up more so that um, you know maybe you could even graduate with an associate's degree as you graduate from high school. So um, it's an exciting time to be at Brenham Cup, and thank you for being here. And um, do y'all want to open it up for questions, or? They're going to be able to ask questions ask at the tables. Ask questions at the tables. Okay. Thank you so much for coming.